Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to The Edge with your boy Micah Parsons live in your Bleacher Report app. We're here in Orlando at the Pro Bowl, and I got some special guests. I got a special guest joining me later on in the show, but obviously, you already know why I'm here. I'm here to speak my piece. And early on, um, off rip, I disappeared off the map, went out to Peru with my family uh, to reevaluate, you know, just life, just like Everything past that loss, and if you think I was okay with that loss or how we lost at any point, shape, or form, you're obviously delusional, very delusional. Um, Let's just get right into the loss. Um, Obviously, Jordan Love played an unbelievable game, Um, but at the end of the day, we were just outperformed, out-schemed, however you want to put it. Like They had an answer for everything. And people saying, well, why ain't you go to linebacker? Because, you know, they said you could stop the run. Well, guess what? The packages are in for me to go to linebacker. There's multiple packages, multiple variations. But I can only play what it's called. Whatever they're calling, whoever personnel they're putting on, I'm not putting out personnel. I'm not putting out uh, the calls. There, nothing's coming from me. So you could put that in sh- – Put that wherever you want to be or wherever you want to put it, but they're not coming from me. The package is in. I've even told multiple players, coaches, that I'm very fine playing linebacker. and playoffs, if that's what y'all want me to do, I just want to win. And you can ask any coach, ask any player that. It's a God honest truth. Because obviously this is not where I want to be sitting right now, speaking to you, talking about what we're doing at the Pro Bowl. And that's just the reality of it. I do see a Super Bowl in my future. I want to be a Super Bowl champion. And it's very upsetting that I'm even here, happening to even speak to y'all and trying to say if I really care about the game and if I'm showing up in playoffs. I challenge anyone to actually go look at the game film and say, did Micah play his heart out in that game? And what more could I have done? You know, and, you know, it, it's sad, man, that you lose the way you do, especially at home, talking about how much we played at home, uh, how much it's still for us to – be at home and to go out like that at home was completely embarrassing and unacceptable. So, you know, I couldn't even look at that loss or feel any type of way because of how embarrassed I felt. I felt, you know, the utmost, you know, just, man, it was just, honestly, it it took me a while to even be able to show my face in the public. I like disappeared like completely. So, you know, it, it really showed to me that, you know, um, that it, you really see how much people care about the game of football and the culture and, and uh, the people you want around you when you say you want to build a Super Bowl championship team and the the truth about it, you know, and um, it sucks. And, you know, you know, sitting, sitting here and, uh, you know, they're talking about we're going all in this year, man. That's what I would hope for. You know, I'm 24 years old. I've been in this league, you know, three years, and i kind of seen it all. And uh, I hope that we go all in. I hope that we go out and get the players that we're missing because we didn't do that this year. You know, I hope that we challenge ourselves, become better, and become greater for us. Um, and I'm trying to say this in, like, the most nice way possible because of how, like, I truly feel. And, you know, you got analysts and – um you got guys like Skip that just talk so crazy out on the media just because they can. Skip, I've never once asked you to hype me up or do anything like that. You did that because you saw what I was doing on the field. Um, like, I've never wanted you to jump on my coattail or you're the one that wanted me on your show to come speak on your show. Uh, and I wanted to do my own route because of your bad ties and who you are. I did not want to be partner with you. And that's just point blank simple. So you could drive whatever narrative or whatever what whatever you want to be, but a person who's been all pro for three years and however you want to put it, I guess I am not that guy and I got to do more to be a guy. Whatever narrative that drives your boat, whatever you want to fit. Um, but go watch the, go watch that Packers game and watch Aaron Jones follow me wherever I went. Uh, and you could say that they blocked me, but, I mean, Jordan Love had almost every accessible throw uh, there was, so how can you get a quarterback? if you, As a pass rusher, you look for opportunity for the quarterback to hold the ball, 
You know, it like it, it just is what it is, and that's just the game. You know, it's tough, and it's very disappointing. Um, and you know, going into this year, uh, there's just a lot of work and a lot of culture that needs to be established for us to be a Super Bowl team. I never believe. I believe that. Uh, you know, the Super Bowl is never won really by the best team. It's by the team that can put it together. So, obviously, the penalties hurt us again. Um, penalties hurt. I mean, look at the Ravens game. I believe the Ravens was by far the best team, um, and they did not go on to win that game. I mean, you look at penalties. You look at momentum shifting plays. Uh, it just it just happens to be that way. Experience is a gift, um, and obviously surrounded by really good players and really good coaching. But, you know, I do see a lot of people, you know, overreacting. Um, I And, you know, a lot of blame goes on to Dak Prescott because he is a quarterback and people look at his playoff wins, but we gave up over 40-plus points. What, what do you expect Dak Prescott to be? Do you expect him to be Superman? He cannot win games by himself. I've always said football is not a game of one man. It's a game of 22 men that go on the field and – you need to rely on every 22 guys to win that game. It's not relied on one individual, two individuals. It's a team that can play together as a group the best collectively, not give up big plays and not cost their team uh, first downs and things like that. So I do not put down Dak Prescott. He is a all pro. He has played a terrific game. Um, could have, would have, should have been an MVP, but he's not. And to put that narrative – you know, people want to drive whatever narrative that fits best for them, and that's what I'm realizing about this game of football. And that's what kind of drives away the happiness because people don't appreciate how good someone has been. Um, they want to attack them for where they're at or what they have done and things like that. Um, so I think that came a long way. Um, obviously, one of his better years since I've been with the Cowboys. So – that narrative of we wanted a different quarterback or we want a different guy, I think he's been a great leader, uh, whatever, whatever, however y'all want to put that. Um, you know, and and that just drives me to I'm at complete peace. You know, yeah, and and I say that because I don't think I've could have done anything more to try to uh win that game. And and that comes to watching film with the other guys in the room, saying what I'm seeing, being vocal out there on the field. Um, I was completely at peace because I know I don't have no regrets about how I performed or what I put into the game. And, uh, you know, and I appreciate what really matters in life and that's family. Uh, outside, you know, um, I don't think that game defined me at all. I don't think, you know, that moment uh, defined me. So I'm completely at peace of how I went. I can't change. Uh, how it went or, you know, where it went. So I'm completely at peace. I love where I'm at in life. I love my family and I love from where we're going and I love how they're talking and how we're going to look ahead, you know, and that means I believe in Mike McCarthy. Uh, we won a lot of games with Mike, uh, 36 wins uh, under the belt with Mike. So, you know, hopefully – uh, he could take us all the way and, you know, we drive this culture and we change the narrative that people have, you know. But now I'm going to bring in uh, my special guest um, from the Philadelphia Eagles, DeAndre Swift. What's up, Swifty? What's going on? PA dogs in the house. PA, 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 PA. You know, y'all... D. Swift, it's your first Pro Bowl. How you feel, man? I feel good, man. I feel good to be out here. It's a blessing. I know, bro. You know, I'm, I'm even more happy just because, you know, we really came from the same part, 7-on-7 seven seven together. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm happy about your success and what you've been able to accomplish. Uh, you know, how would you like Philly this year? What was the difference between Philly and Detroit? Because Detroit had a lot of success this year. Um, what do you think, uh, you know, what, what's the difference between Philly and Detroit? Uh... Detroit, the, I was speaking on Detroit first. Detroit doing their thing right now. Um, I can kind of tell when they left that they was going to have success. They got the right people in the building, the right coaches. But um, Philly was a little bit different. Um, first and foremost, the food was better in the facility. Yeah. Food was better. Uh, culture was a little bit different. Um, but it was good, though. It was good. It was different, but it was it was, it was was good in the same same sense. A lot yeah. of people there from top to bottom. Um 
equipment people, everybody in the building. Uh, the way they treat you, man, it, it was it was it was great. It was great being there this year. For sure. I mean, I feel like we in the same boat. I feel like we was one of the better teams in the league that fell short. Yeah. And uh, you know, what would you say to concern Philly fans that you know may have concerns about how y'all season ended? Just knowing we had the team that could go the whole way and we fell short with the potential that we had. We had the talent to do it, just came up short. So that's what I think the frustration really is. A hundred percent. I mean, I feel like y'all were similar. I feel like, you know, same way. We had nine all pros. I mean, just anything you can imagine we had and around and we just couldn't put it together, man. That, that frustrating fact, I don't think people realize how competitive we is yeah. and how it makes us feel like it's nothing personal. And I don't think the fans really, what would you say to the fans that really don't understand how competitive and how frustrating it can be when you just can't put it together um, and you and you trying everything in your possible way too? Yeah, I say, don't nobody want to win more than us as players. Yeah. They, they see the product on Sundays and Thursdays and Mondays, but it's a lot of work that going into it throughout the week. A lot of preparation, grind throughout the week. Um, but don't nobody want to succeed more than the people on the field that put the helmets and shoulder pads on. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? So they got to be be patient with us as much as they can. Yeah, you know, what What, what could you pinpoint? Like, 10 and 1, number one seed, everyone saying y'all y'all going to be there. You know, what, what, what was the shift like? What was the energy like? Talking about when after this we started losing yeah. the streak right there. Uh, man, it was, it's tough. It's tough. Um, you know, later in the year people started playing their best ball. Later in the year, it come down. We ain't making enough plays, bro. That's how I feel. We ain't making enough plays. People might say play calling, coaching, whatever it is may be, but at the end of the day, we out there. We got to make it happen. Whatever might get called, mm -hmm. players got to execute. It come down to execution. So that's what I feel like we really didn't do a good enough job of. Like from top to bottom, we just ain't making enough plays. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, it, it's crucial. And, and I keep telling people, it don't just live off of one person or two people. It takes all twenty two. Like, Damn. and I feel like that's where a lot of people fail to realize. They were like, "Man, why aren't our best guy?" You know, it take three. Like, even as pass rush, it take three other rushers for that that your your guy to actually succeed. He got the D tackles got to push the pocket. The other guy got to be balance his rush. You know. Um, the same way on O line, man. You can't get off unless you know whoever don't pick up the block or don't shield them off or right. get the kick out. So you know, I I think a lot of people expect some guys to be Superman sometimes, and you know, and sometimes there's gonna be a once in every two hundred plays where you are Superman, where you Makes break you five six tackles, yeah. and uh, but people don't realize, man, you 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 know, you playing the best in the world, and, and and it's that for a reason, um. Free agency, man. Like, where you want to be back in Philly? You want to stay home, or you know, would you like to stay home, or would you like to go elsewhere? I mean, you one of the best prospects in free agency. Um, anybody be lucky to have you? What you think? I mean, I know we tired of playing you, you know. <laughs> um, so, where, where where you think about heading, man? Uh, waiting right now. Um, I feel like we'll see what happens. Um, time will tell with that. Uh, just kind of focusing on. Training and stuff like that right now because yeah. I don't really, I don't know what's going on right yeah. now. I was waiting on phone calls and stuff like that to see what's going on. Um, but we'll see when it gets there, when the time is right. You coming back to Texas? Yeah, I'm coming back to Texas. Yeah. You going to be in Dallas or Austin? I'm gonna be in Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be over there. You be in Dallas? Yeah, we're okay. going to get, you yeah. know, I'm going to stay. So you might know when I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might be in the building. I might you be might in the building. You might know when I know. Um, Let's get it. Let's get into the, to y'all goal line, man. I mean, are you talking about touch push? Yeah, like yeah. How, how frustrating it is because I know you could you could get an end zone. It seemed like you kept falling at the one yard line. Yeah, you, that's my fault though. <laughs> <laughs> that's my fault. First game, actually, um, Vikings game. I get down to the one. I look to the sideline. I'm thinking they call another run. Yeah. Nah, touch push. Yeah. I, After that, I'm like, anytime I fall at the one, I knew it's on me. It's on my. It's my fault. Yeah, Jason Kelsey even said he said, "I'm sorry, man. You know exactly what we about to do." Like, how how often was that? Like, he had 15 touch. Like, as a quarterback, 15 touchdowns is crazy. Like, yeah. eventually, like, I'd be like, man, like, do you talk to Sirianni or the OC? Like, yo, can I get at the one? Like, one every one every four times, mm -hmm. or like, 
Is there a conversation to be had? Like, it ain't no conversation. Anytime it's short yardage, because, you know, football, it's, it's a numbers game. So with a percent of the tush push succeeding is very high. So we calling it first and goal if we on the one. If we on the two, we might call them run. But on the one, it's over with. I seen on the two, y'all went tush push twice. We did. That was crazy. Like, I... <laughs> We did, we did. Nah, then we, we might have to take it out the game <laughs> so that way uh, y'all can eat over there, man. Like, they ain't trying to let you run your numbers up. That's like, what it is, man. I got to score when I need to score. Nah, I, I feel you. I feel you. Um, you know, what, you know, since we uh, – what, what would you say? What was your top five defenses you played this year? This year? Seen some good ones. Um, San Fran, San Fran. Um, Dallas, there's no order. There's no order. San Fran, Dallas. Um, who else had a good defense? Seattle was good. Seattle played as good. But I feel like everybody played it. Like we got everybody's best. Like, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Eagles, Cowboys is in that round where everybody want to beat us. Like, yeah, everybody every week. You everybody getting you getting their best shot. Every you get their best shot. Like it's the Super Bowl for 100%, sure. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. But um, so that's three. Uh, who else? Chiefs. Chiefs solid, especially over there at home. That's my first time playing in Kansas yeah. City, too. Loud. They got a good defense. Um, give you one more. Um, the Jets. The Jets. Yeah, the, nah, Jets. the Jets. People the Jets. really underestimate the Jets. Yeah, they nice over there. They got a good defense. That was our first loss of the season, too. That right? was our first loss. You know, was. and I noticed, like, in getting the discussion of valuable positions, every team, um, pretty much every team had a great linebacker core. You know, yeah, the Jets had two of them. Yeah, they had two of them. Yeah, they was they was legit. Mm -hmm. Nah, they was legit for sure. Um, you know, man, uh, who who's your pick for the Super Bowl? It's tough. It's tough. It's it's tough to go against Patty. It's tough to go against Patty. But um, I, I I like the Forty Niners. I like the Forty Niners. But like I said, it's tough to go against Patty. I'm, it's this it's a toss up right now. It can go any, either way. I feel like go either way. Who you like? Last year, I had that same conversation. It was like, man, who you got? And I was like, man, um, the Eagles was so much more talented than the Chiefs. But experience and coaching. It matter. Truly matter. It matter. You know, I even said coaching is 70% of football, almost. You know, 30%. Because I was like, 30% of the players, you know, if you one-on-one -on -one with their best guys, you might win 50, 60% of the time. Right. And and that's just something you got to live with because, you know, that's the matchup. That's our design. Yeah. But if you design to get that one-on-one -on -one with that particular, particular individual, you know, that scheme that, you know, to create those matchups and things, that's how you create that movement. So, you know, man, it, it's hard to go with the against the Niners because of how much talent they got. But right. I'm the same way with you. Pat, can he do miraculous Wait, things. And Andy Reid, man, they – it's crazy. It's Yo, crazy. and I, and it is. I think it's going to be a fun matchup to watch because McDuffie yeah. and like Jerry Sneed yeah. against uh, they outside. You can be both. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. going to be. No, I'm tuned in with this one. Yeah, this is. <laughs> this, I think this is going to be. Uh, and then I don't know. Pat Mahomes. He been having a number too. Oh, they playing good ball right now. You seen what Kelsey did last yeah. week? Like they playing. They're playing good ball at the right time. Yeah, I think that Fred and uh, Travis matchup is going to be very interesting. Oh, yeah, interesting. for sure. For sure. I'm going to be tapped into that, man. Um, let's take some Pro Bowl questions from the chat um, before we wrap up. Will we see you at QB for flag football? I ain't get the rules yet, but I'm hoping they uh, switched them up from last year and let, you know, defense play offense and offense play defense, especially since they let Tyreek Hill play middle linebacker last year um, to their advantage. Favorite thing about the Pro Bowl weekend? I would say my favorite thing about Pro Bowl weekend will probably be things like tonight, you know, uh, you know, renting out uh, Universal Studios, all the families get to go, uh, get the bonding time with the players. Uh, building relationships, connections, things like that. I always think that's like the best part, you know, the relationship with the players because, you know, the league's only going to go as far as we go. So uh, that's usually – and it's usually hilarious. Like you talk mm -hmm. about all different type of stories, yeah. things that you can never say lie, things that you notice. So uh, that's probably going to be one of my uh, favorite parts of the trip. And you give me – I'm going to be with my son and uh, all my loved ones. So uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be real fun. Uh, Swift, what's it like playing for the Philly Dogs? It's cool. It's cool. I ain't really get the chance to play with everybody that came from Georgia. Um, 
But it's cool being in the same locker room and in the NFL locker room as you was once in college with. You know what I mean? Just see how them guys grow and uh, mature from the next level. Um, it, it was cool. It was cool to be a part of. Did you feel any added pressure before the playoff game or did it feel uh, business as usual? Obviously, I think playoffs is way more intense, um, but I didn't feel no pressure. I just felt um, – I don't. I never really feel pressure because, you know, pressure is a, a privilege. I really just feel like that – that anxiousness of wanting to win, that that like you really want to move on, you really want to get to that next level. So I wouldn't say uh, it's pressure. I feel like I'm just more anxious. Like, and you know, um, you know, you always anxious to see the outcome. You know, saying you know, win or loss. You know, it, it's either going to be a sad moment or a happy moment. It, it's no more uh, next week, as we know. So I think it's more anxious. And they saying you plan on playing in the Olympics. The Olympics. Yeah, the flag football Olympics. Yeah, if I'm available, if they want me to play, I'll get out there for That's sure. That's what I said. I, I mean, to get a gold medal? Yeah, yeah to get a gold I'm medal? Like, yeah, of course. Who Who's your dream lineup? Like, who would you play with? Like, whole line, like offensively? Yeah. Right now? Receiver, quarterback, just name the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. We're going to go AJ, AJ Brown. It's going to be biased, You need though. three receivers. Okay, I'm going AJ. You can't be biased. It's going to be, though. I'm telling you, it's going to be. AJ, um, Smitty. Mm-hmm. Uh, put a, give me a, uh, give me CD. Okay. Give me CD. You don't want that super speed, Tyree? I feel like you got has speedy, like. You do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> like, I, I can't, I can't. Give me, I, Rick, give me Rick instead of CD. Give me Rick and CD all right. instead of CD. Because um, I feel like there's no lineup where I'm not having Tyreek. Like, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got you to respect him. Like. 100% right. 100% right. Quarterback, give me, uh, give me Jalen. You going to take Jalen? Yeah. You not taking Pat Mahomes? He in the Super Bowl. I don't even know if he compete in the Olympics. He in the Super Bowl. Nah, this is Olympics. Everybody's okay, available. Okay. Everybody's Give me Jalen. Give me Jalen. Over Pat? Oh man, dang! Who who's your backup QB? There's always two. You always got two. Patty, you gonna take Patty? Yeah. All right. Um, who who's your uh, LBs? You taking? Off the ball, right? You don't count. Off the ball. Yeah. Okay. Give me um. Give me Roquan. Roquan. Give me Roquan and uh, give me Fred. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Edge. You got your Edge. We'll go with Michael Parsons. Um, give me Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick. You two are all Philly, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, you asking me. That's who I'm picking. Oh man. Oh man. That that, that was real crazy. I mean, Hassan Reddick and Michael Parsons on the edge. You don't like that? I mean, no, nah, I, I like I like it, but I'm just saying your 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 lineup is real biased. I told you that before you, I told you that. Yeah, I see. I know how biased with that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, you know, if that if it's my lineup, yeah. you know. My lineup, I'm definitely taking Pat off rip. Pat is going to be my uh, starting QB. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, obviously, you know, I'm going to choose my quarterback, Dak. He, he's got – they got to be my one-two punch. Okay. Uh, my receivers, I'm definitely going Tyree. He, he's going to uh, be my for one. Sure, for sure. Um, you know, CD, he's always going to be my slot because he play outside and inside. He do, he like, do he, both. He do he's, both. He's, he's dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at, at my ex, I got to go with Devontae. You know, I got to get, you know, he his route running is too impeccable. Oh, we forgot about tight ends. Who's your two tight ends? Give me, um, uh, I go Kelsey. Kelsey? I go, you say two? Yeah, you get Kelsey two. Kelsey and Goddard. I know, I know. Yeah, you know going. Going. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, tight ends, man. A lot, of, a lot of people who stepped up this year. Ferguson had a good year. Ferguson went Ferguson crazy had a good this year. year. He had a good year. I, I I would really like to see him get his expanded role into the offense. Like, okay. you know, they use him in a lot of different ways, run game out, mm-hmm. a lot of check downs. I like to see because, you know, towards the end of the year, he was getting way more vertical. Yeah. They would have brought that. that. Um, and early in the year, yeah. I feel like he would have went for Laporta numbers or Kittle I numbers. I say he had a hell of a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but right now, obviously, you got to go Kelsey yeah. um, at tight end. And then the other one's a toss-up, you know, because I love KP, uh, mm-hmm. Kyle. Mm-hmm. Um, man, but whew, Andrews is a dog, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I got to go Kelsey yeah. Andrews. Yeah, for sure. Because um, I think Andrews in the red zone, boy, he. he yeah, 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 Problem. yeah. Um, and, you know, my edge guys, whew, you know, I, 
outside of myself. Yeah, I about to say, don't pick yourself. I'm not. I'm not. Outside of myself, I'm going to go with uh, Max and Miles. Ooh, Max man. and Miles, yeah. I, Max's effort is just. Yeah, yeah. Every play, whole yeah, game. Yeah, Max. That That's. That's that's a dog itself, mm-hmm. and uh, Miles, you know, he's Dominic. just yeah. Um, and you know, my corners gotta go with La Ramsey, mm-hmm. um, for sure. And then for me, my next three corners, I'm going for ball. They gotta go for the ball, yeah. so I'm going D. Bland, Trayvon. Oh yeah, and uh, Picks. on the outside, <laughs> on the outside, ah, on my other outside, I got who who would I pick? Mm. It's a lot of good corners. Snee had a good year. Snee had yeah, a great, great year. year. But I feel like that's what I'm getting out of Jalen. He long, yeah. press physical. corner, f- physical corner. Mm-hmm. I, I I need somebody like more. Mm. Yeah, what you looking for? It, it got to be a dominant nickel. It got to be a dominant nickel. Uh, what the name from um Jaylen? Bengals? Bengals twenty one. You talking about Hilton? Yeah. Hilton, Hilton cool, but I think uh, Jalen Johnson went crazy this year. Oh, he played nickel from the Bears? I, didn't Jalen Johnson play nickel? he played outside. He played, didn't he do, he played outside? He nice. I like him. Then I got to like go with game. Kenny. Somebody like Kenny or somebody. You need a dominant nickel. Like yeah. Somebody who's scrappy on the inside. You do. Definitely do. Yeah, yeah. But that 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 definitely be my lineup. Um, but you got a couple more questions for the he's chat. Swift effect is the most... Important to you as you enter free agency? Uh, I would say just the right situation. It's the right situation. That's what I would say when it comes down to it. Um, right situation for me, my family. That's about it. If Swift UJ's team played Micah's Penn State team, who's I'm not even going to lie to yeah, you. Ask him. Let him I, ask I, him. I'm not even going to lie to you. UGA going, I mean, you know, we're going to put up a fight. We're going to fight. Uh-huh. And we're going to try to win. But that UGA lineup is uh, – I mean, y'all got about twenty first round picks for a reason. Like, Glad you kept it a hundred. Yeah, I, I don't even lie to the. I don't Glad lie to the people. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all. <laughs> no, they got bad. The yeah. I answer for it. They got bad. <laughs> <laughs> nah, y'all. I mean, y'all was blowing. Y'all blowing teams out. I yeah, mean, no, we had a squad. We had a squad. I mean, seeing what Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis is becoming. Yeah. I mean, Quay Walker, he's hooping. I mean, yeah, yeah. we doing good over in Green Bay. <sighs> Man, um. Anyone y'all think was snubbed from the Pro Bowl? I think Antoine Winfield got snubbed. Oh, yeah. um, I a mean, a couple people. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely think there was a, a quite a few people who got snubbed. Yeah. Um, man, but I think he was like the biggest snub ever, them all. Antoine, he yeah. had a great year. Great year. Turnovers, picks. Yeah. You know, I know they try to say it's the voting, but you know, players and coaches vote too. We mm-hmm. we count for other two thirds, so. I don't, I know he I wasn't in the offensive room so he wasn't obviously on my ballot but I got a you got a question you know what he had my vote you know and that, that's where I say a lot of things was wrong with the players I feel like that we do is like a lot of times they just vote for names like we ain't just we ain't I looking at what people's accomplishing and doing this right, shit they right. just vote names like even when you look at our all pro list like yeah. a lot of that was name based like a lot of people had way better years than a lot of people so um, I think we need to change that how we look at the game and. Vote for the people who's actually yeah, having more great deserving, years. yeah, more deserving. I mean, just we see man. that a lot of times in Pro Bowl. I, I there's guys who have ten plus sacks and don't make Pro Bowls because right, right. you know obviously you're gonna vote for the legends of the game and mm-hmm. things like that. But um, we definitely gotta do better right there. Oh, that's my um, first one. I'm just glad to be here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy you're here too. We, to have, we have a good. Your pops here. He get here uh, tomorrow. Yeah, my pops get here yeah, tomorrow. Oh, you know they about to go crazy. Yeah, he get here tomorrow. Um, you know, last one. How's the Eagle and Cowboy on the same couch? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's man, it's all love. Me and Swift, we've been locked in since high school. Uh, same seven on seven teams. Yeah. Uh, recruiting process. You know, I thought she was coming to Penn State for a little bit too. I did too for a second. Yeah, I did too. And then you you hopped on a wagon to Georgia, but you know he left the state, and I'm gonna continue to rep the state, and that's all that matters. Um, yeah, what made you choose UGA? Is it that nil? It's too late for them to get you. No, I ain't. That wasn't even a, <laughs> that wasn't even a thing when I was in school. That was that's the only visit I took, but other than Penn State, um, we drove up to Georgia. Um, it was just it felt like, but I, I wanted to get away from Philly. I wanted to go play SEC. I know I wanted to play SEC. And um, Georgia, it was just felt like home away from home. People, yeah. the coaches, um, 
It's the way they the way they take care of their players. Yeah, I, I love Georgia when I was up there too. Yeah. Y'all, y'all had something special going on. Um, it, it was great. But you know, I tr- I appreciate y'all tuning in uh, to the Lions Den Pro Bowl show. Uh, we're gonna have a great show at the Super Bowl. I can't wait for y'all to see it. Tune in. It's gonna be spectacular. Maybe the best show of the year. Um, so I can't wait. We're always gonna do bigger and better for Super Bowl. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hearing our piece. Thank you, DeAndre Swift, for coming on the show. Uh, we appreciate y'all, and we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>